Have you ever woke up on a Sunday morning with a knock on your door where someone delivers a subpoena to you and now you're like, what, am I a criminal? Well, very good organization here in the state of Alabama, a grassroot organization named Eagle Forum. They had that similar experience. Becky Garretson is with us today to talk about that, and you definitely want to hear about it. It's a fascinating story. You don't want to miss it. We're literally debating that it's bad that people get to say what they think. Can you imagine? I'm reading Psalm 144, and it says, He trains my hands for war. We are on the brink of total destruction of America as we know it. Let your rebel flag fly. Welcome into this week's edition of Alabama Unfiltered. I am one of your hosts, Scott Beeson. Amy Beth Shaver is with me, Allison Sinclair as well. And we've got a special guest this week. But before we do that, don't forget to go to all the places where you find your podcast, whether that be Spotify, Apple, Facebook, Podbeam, where are the other places? iTunes, iTunes Rumble. iTunes, Rumble. All the places where you find your podcast, that is where we are. Give us a thumbs up. Let other people know about the program. And don't forget to check out 1819news.com. They are the power behind this show. Please go there. Sign up for the daily detail. Yes. And their newsletter where you can find out all the things that are going on in Alabama. It is a news outlet that is not biased. It's just giving you the straight up news about what is happening in our state. Go ahead and do that. And as our guest this week is a... uh, Spokesperson, special person from one of my favorite groups in the state of Alabama, Eagle Forums, <laughs> Becky Garrettson is with us. So, uh, ladies, how are y'all? Great. I'm really looking forward to this show. Um, I think it's something that probably most people, if you're in our circles, you're paying attention to it. A lot of people might not grasp the significance of what just happened and what's going on with Eagle Forum. So, thank you for being here. Thank really you so much it. for having me. No, it's great. It's good to see you again. And, yes. and, and as we start, I want to just say that Eagle Forum has been around in the state for a Over very, 45 very, years. As long yeah. as I can remember, longer than I was involved in politics, always a uh, pro family, mm-hmm. pro values oriented um, organization, and um, done good work for years and yes. years and years and years. And you've been involved come, in policy yes. issues for all that time. And you came, got involved. 2019. With, 2019 is when, I is when you started mm-hmm. at Eagle Forum. Mm hmm. So very interesting. Yeah. Tell us for a lot of people that may not know about Eagle Forum or groups like Eagle Forum. Tell us what you do, kind of how you got started and what you do on a regular basis and groups like yours do in Montgomery and really D.C. as well. So Eagle Forum is a grassroots nonprofit Judeo-Christian organization. And we advocate for good family policy. That's really bottom line what we're all about, whether it's taxes that we get involved in or ESG scores or um, charter schools or, you know, school choice, education, lots. We do a lot of stuff with education. Um, And the bill that we're going to talk about today, um, stopping the mutilation of our minors here in the state. Right, right. I think think the... um Eagle Forum's involvement with education was one of the first things that I ever heard yes. about Eagle yep. Forum because Eagle Forum was involved in uh, looking at the proposed textbooks yes. for the state of Alabama and saying what yes. would be appropriate, what wouldn't be appropriate. And I, um, I guess we've kind of lost that battle when when Common Core came yes. and they just tell us what we're going to use and mm. and the right. state kind of decides. But that's probably my first, um, not run in, but realization that there was an Eagle Forum. Right. And it was one of those things that really we should have been paying attention to more. Mm-hmm. Regular people weren't paying attention, mm-hmm. but Eagle Forum was doing the work mm-hmm. behind the scenes and and had a huge impact, I guess, during the uh, during Common James, Core, Fom especially James, too. Well, yeah. fi- yes. Fighting yeah. for Common Core, yeah. Eagle Forum was big or against right. Common Core. Right. But I guess it was the Fob James administration and some of them but that Eagle were they were Forum. much more welcoming to pro family, pro Christian values mm-hmm. kind right. of legislation. But you're a national organization. So there is a National Eagle Forum, which was started by Phyllis Schlafly. This is just a chapter. We are a completely separate organization. We are our own 501c4 incorporated. We have a 501c3 also. Um, So there are Eagle Forum chapters in most of the states. Um, And we just happen to be here stationed in Birmingham. Right. And at the state house when those doors are open. And there are states where Eagle Forum is really 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 big and really powerful and we have we're at the federal level so national okay. eagle forum is at, in washington right and they are dealing with federal legislation we do deal with that also but they are our voice at the 
Well, let me ask you this question, because the there are states. I think Eagle Forum was was really powerful in Utah, at least at one time. They've I got a great. Right. And I don't know how influential they are. I have a lot of questions about Utah, but I'm sure the Utah people have some questions about Alabama, yeah. considering some of the things we've done. <laughs> um, but do you ever talk to your sister organizations in other states? And how different is Alabama or are all the states basically the same? The names are just different in the legislature. No, the, the entities are kind of the same. So what, what do you see out there in other states? Eagle Forum is fighting the same fights. We're all the family-oriented mm-hmm. okay. kind of mm-hmm. fights. But we have an organization in Washington State. Okay. And so what they see, I feel so bad for them because – you know, they're just getting hit on the head all the time the, because they're just yeah, they're surrounded by... They're just a mole and whack-a-mole. They just put yes, their head up and... Oh, wow. So they're just... But they keep fighting. You know, they okay. keep trying to pass good laws and bring up good things and try to kill the bad things. Um, so every state is different, but Tennessee has a really strong Eagle Forum, mm-hmm. especially fighting these same kind of bills that we're going to talk about today. And then Utah is also very strong. I mean, there's a lot of good ones. Texas, they're very... Um, organized in Texas really? also. Okay. Yes. I had never heard of Texas. I knew that, that Tennessee has. Tennessee is one of those weird states, too. They do really Excuse good me. things sometimes. Well, I think if you were still there, they'd be more weird. <laughs> <Fighting first. laughs> At least they got me out. They got right? rid of yeah. you and sent you to us. Yep. I don't know what happened. Sorry. But um, so Tennessee sometimes, they kind of hit or miss. They do really good things, and sometimes you're like, what? How did that no, happen in yeah, Tennessee? True. That is true. But um, so are those the places, the Texas, the Tennessee, the Utahs that – that you hope things kind of get that way here? Because I frankly wish that um, Eagle Forum and conservatives and Christian values were bigger in Alabama, but it's it just doesn't seem to I be think that way. with the people, and you guys mm-hmm. know this, with the citizens of Alabama, that is who we are. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily what's being represented at the state house, And right. that's yes. such a problem. Right. But I think having Allison's group starting up and Eagle Forum in the last year and a half, we've started 19 new small groups across the state really? that have really wow. been helpful in when we go to the state house to lobby and to, to talk to legislators. It's really great to have citizens being involved. And I think that we can turn the steering wheel back a little bit mm-hmm. and, um, Especially when you you look at all this horrible stuff that's coming at our kids, right? People are fired up and they yeah. want to get involved. So that's good. What's the process? Because if you read the story, and we'll get to the subpoena and what happened this past week, but some people act like it's this most bizarre thing that citizens are writing legislation, and that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, we a few of us got together and wrote um, the opt-in requirement for the yes. mental health services bill. Yes. We're just citizens yes. and and we wrote it and you you find a sponsor, someone that wants to carry it or present it. It goes to legislative services. So like the legislature looks it over, mm-hmm. someone from the department and mm-hmm. and they make it they, they make it legit, you know, but it's it's an idea from the citizens, which yeah. in my head is the way it's supposed to be. Apparently, this is now potentially illegal to lobby for wow. and advocate. <laughs> well, that's what the DOJ yeah, is. The DOJ right. is trying, trying to, to say. But think. what is the process like? And y'all have been doing this forever. What are some of the pieces of legislation in the past that Eagle Forum has been involved in? And kind of what's the process when you have an idea? You hear from your small chapters and your groups. This is really important to us. Then okay. what happens? So the Alabama Reading Initiative, way yes. back, mm-hmm. Eagle Forum was really instrumental in making all of that happen. Um, just in the last quadrennium, we had a resolution declaring pornography as a public health crisis. Mm. So we wrote all of that, and then that was passed by both houses, then or both chambers, I should say. And then we had the campus free speech bill. We wrote that, and we had a wonderful sponsor, Matt Friday, mm. and he was really good. He had to tweak it, and he did a great job carrying the water for that bill because he had to meet with all the colleges. And, you know, you have mm. to sort of make happy medium in some of the things, but that was a really great bill. And actually, um, that there's some big stuff happening with that bill right now, but that was passed in 2019. And then this most recent one, the vulnerable child compassion and protection act. And can I just tell you how that got started? Yes. Because it's been years in the making. Yes. Yes. So in 2020, we had some guidance counselors, or I'm sorry, some family counselors and some parents come to us and say, We are really concerned about this whole transgender movement, and there's such a trend. What is going on? Um, This is affecting us. Can you help us? And these counselors especially were really worried about their jobs because if they were counseling kids to remain in the gender, you know, helping them 
be comfortable with who they are in their own bodies. Um, you mean stay, they were worried. Stay what God made them. Yes, yeah, stay okay. what God. Sure clear. These Christian counselors were going to be. They were worried they were going to be fired. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, we decided. We started doing a lot of research, and we decided, okay, we're going to write a bill. And so Margaret Clark, our general counsel, she had. She wrote a lot of it. We partnered up with the um, Eric Johnston's group, mm -hmm. Southeast Law Institute. Right, that's it. That's right. And you know, tweaked a lot of things. And then of course we took it to Wes Allen in the house mm -hmm. and Shay Shellnut and said, would you guys sponsor this for us? And they did. And there were a few little changes that need to be made here and there. And it goes to legislative services. They put it in the right format and make sure that there aren't, it's not hurting any other laws or, right. you know, messing up any other laws. I'm sorry, I'm not being real articulate mm -hmm. with that, but anyway, um, so this bill passed in, in 2020, it passed in the Senate, mm -hmm. but then COVID hit. Mm. done boom yeah. into the session right. so the next year came back it passed in the senate again both times it was like 87 percent that it passed with but house leadership had a problem with it this is just the battles that we Shocker. fight can you tell us what the problem was um, without telling um, which leadership one just wasn't real happy with it i think there were a lot of lobbyists on the other side that were really fighting pushing back mm -hmm. um some big institutions here in birmingham mm. probably part of that so anyway, it didn't pass that year either. But last year in 2022, it did pass both the House and the Senate with over 80%. Mm -hmm. The governor right. signed it. About a few days after she signed it, then some parents got together and said, no, this is going to hurt our children. We want them to continue these puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. Right. So they sued the state. Okay. Then the DOJ thought, hmm, that sounds, you know, that's one of their priorities. They... Right. Want to right. be able to allow to mutilate right. children. Right. They think right. that's okay. So they jumped in on the suit as well. They were not okay. original plaintiffs, but they joined the suit okay. also. So they had this hearing to stop the law. These parents wanted the law to not go into effect. Mm -hmm. So they had a hearing. And, and who's the judge? The judge is Judge Lyle Burke. Okay. Northern District of Alabama. And right there, before we go on, tell our audience basically what the bill says. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so VCAP is the Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Act, very simple bill. Mm -hmm. All it does is ban the puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and sex reassignment surgeries for minors. Right. So when simple. can somebody... So when they turn 19... They can do what they want. If they want to do what they want, that's totally fine. I wish they wouldn't, but I mean, right. they're, they're an adult. They're, right? they're a legal and they adult, and they what can they make that decision for themselves. Okay. There's also a part in the law that a lot of people don't talk about, but in schools, if your child is transitioning at school, they're using a different name, they're changing their clothes at school, the parents don't know. Um, this is happening in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. and, and the teachers call the, the student by their new name, right. and they allow it to all go on, and they don't say anything to the parents. And so we put in the bill, if a parent mm -hmm. asks a teacher, is my student, is my child using a different name, changing their clothes, now they have to tell them. But that's different. But than, you have to ask. You have to. You have to ask. Yeah. Yes, you have to. So but if, if they're if hiding the, it from me, I wouldn't. But I, look, I understand yeah. that was probably one of the. the we, it it wasn't. Of yes, it wasn't the way we originally wrote it. Mm -hmm. But if a parent does ask, by law, the teacher does have Which to. Which means some yes. legislator or some entity wanted to help the parent not know. Yes. yes. Can you so, imagine, so. like, how devious that is? Oh, I can imagine. I've been there. Yes, it's bad. So I'm always fascinated. That's why I asked the questions oh about gosh. who said what and why. Because mm -hmm. like the bill passes with 80-something percent in both houses, but it couldn't pass the House for two years because mm -hmm. so the leadership just said, we're not going to vote on it. We're not, we're gonna well, the first year was COVID. Mm -hmm. but, right. yeah. but, but, okay, finish your thought. I you know saying, behind the scenes kind of how this works. Well, the leadership so we, will keep something from being voted on at all. That way, which is what they which did, keeps in the, the will year. of the people from happening, but the leadership right. can do that. But why? I guess it's like what we see with a lot of bills um, right before an election. And I really read this is what I see in Montgomery, conservative state. It's like we won't pass it, we won't pass it. Oh, wait, we need a few. We need to, mm -hmm. we need to throw the conservatives a few bones and act like we did something before this election. Now, this is one though that is extremely controversial or emotional for a lot of people. And that's what we're seeing. And so I'm actually kind of surprised that they did and, um, and that they did pass it, that they did pass mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I think it was right. I'm like, you can't get a tattoo, you know, until without your parents signing off 
And, yes. But you can mm-hmm. change your sex. I mean, it's you just, can't give your kid alcohol. Right. You can't give them tobacco. But and uh, so okay, so that's a really good point. I had not thought of that one. What about the Alabama code and law that says fourteen and over can make their own medical decisions? How does that factor into this? And- so according to one of the attorneys that we have talked to, because that's one of our priorities, we want to get that age rage raised yeah. back up. Mm-hmm. Um, that in in the medical field and now with this transgender thing, I don't know how that's going to play out, but there are no doctors so far who have signed off on some radical surgery on a on a child without the parent's consent. Mm-hmm. This could be a test case, though. Yeah, they could say so. We don't want to publicize that more, too much, more, right? We don't want to give them too likely, many ideas. Well, but yeah. more I mean, than likely, the latest statute will. So even if it's a different procedure. You can't do the. This law would keep that this from happening. Would keep it from happening. So when they had the hearing to, mm-hmm. to try to stop the law, mm-hmm. the judge allowed the first two. He allowed the puberty blockers and the cross sex hormones to be stopped. So we're not gonna. Those are not going to go into effect. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm so saying you, that so backwards. They, so they, they, could they keep can giving continue the kids. those. Right. They stopped okay. that part of the new law, but they, okay. uh, so kids can still get puberty blockers and cross sex hormones, but right. they can't do sex reassignment surgeries, right. and they still that part about the teacher. Asking right. the teacher, that's still in effect. That is in right. effect, and, okay. and okay. that's good. So uh, from a legal standpoint, how does he split that up? How does he split the baby? Because he's got to make – he should be making some constitutional argument. So he on his own decides, mm-hmm. oh, well, the, the drug therapy, uh, you know, I'll let that keep going. But, the, they say, but the real physical They changes, say in Alabama that they weren't doing – sex reassignment surgeries for minors already. Okay. We still put it in the bill, oh, but yes, they good. say they're not doing it. So really, right. he went ahead and said, okay, we're not going to do this, but we really don't do it anyway. Well, and right. I think part of the argument is that the hormone replacement, all that is reversible, which we know it's, it's not. really not. Right. But, you know, I think their argument would be, well, you can stop that mm-hmm. um, if right. if you're cutting that's off fixable. pieces of your body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of permanent. Um, so let me tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. During this hearing, the judge, just kind of out of the blue, the, the hearing was almost over. And then he said, so who wrote this bill anyway? Which is really kind of a strange question. You yeah. just, once a law is a law, it really doesn't matter. Right, so right. the AGs, they got up on the state of Alabama representing mm-hmm. us, or representing the bill, got mm-hmm. up and said, this is a work product of the Alabama legislature. Which is a great answer. It's true. No, no, They're the, because that's, 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 that is the legal answer. That right. and it was was great. So Margaret and I are like sitting next right. to each other, going, oh, "They're going to call <laughs> on us," you know. Right. So, but it was a great answer because right. that's the truth. That is, it the is truth. They are responsible for it. So that was all in May. Mm-hmm. So we think. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're in a discovery phase right now, and and they're going to have oral mm-hmm. arguments on right. the actual merits of the bill in November. So August tenth, we get. A subpoena from the Department of Justice. We are not involved in the lawsuit at, at all. Okay. Um, we are not a party to this at all. So from May to August, nothing. Nothing. Like you have no clue this is coming. Yeah, I have no idea. Right. Okay. And then here's what it says. Like this, is part of, this is part of the subpoena. Yeah. Here. Says, During Holy the preliminary cow. injunction hearing, the court asked who drafted the bill that resulted in VCAP. Mm-hmm. Several public statements suggest that Eagle Form of Alabama staff may have had some involvement in drafting um, the legislation or its predecessor bills. As a result, the United States is issuing the enclosed subpoena for certain records from the Eagle that would be an Eagle form of Alabama's possession from January 1st, 2017 through the present. 2017? That's before you even got there. It's my heart hurt. Okay. okay. So let me. Wait, can I who's just, this from? The Department of Justice okay. at the it's, federal level. Okay. So right. this is, they are not even a plan. And so it's literally just an email that shows up in your box. Oh, no, no. No. They, this is they, a hand delivered subpoena, like a. This oh, is a, this, you is, the would, this is the actual okay. subpoena. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was on the first page of the subpoena. <laughs> so <laughs> then, are they you have like, this list. I mean, literally, like, what time of I need to know. Like, what time of okay, day did so this they happen? Dropped it like, off who dropped our, it off? At our headquarters. Okay. Um, it was it was written on the 9th of August, and it was, like, put on the doorstep, I think, on the 10th. Oh, okay. It was okay. delivered FedEx. Okay. Oh, really? They did a phase? They didn't have to hand it to you? Yeah, which is weird because we got an email right before that saying, um, 
we want to ish they didn't even say we've subpoena, got a package but, yeah package and, um, on its way yay <laughs> yeah i think they did say something about it where we want to deliver a subpoena or uk by receiving it fedex <laughs> i would say that no. doesn't <laughs> seem normal <laughs> no, no one lives here no well, one's home no it was a weird Probably. email we right. didn't answer yeah. it because you know right. it's like when the irs sends you an email you don't pay attention to it because they tell you we don't, don't send right. emails right. so we were like this is a joke, right? Because right. we're not going to answer this. This is like getting a, something from the IRS. Right. Well, then days later, we it showed up on the okay, door. Okay, I feel like it's worthwhile to stop here and to really, like, people need to grasp what just happened, what was dropped on your doorstep, which is an attack on... Freedom on free speech, on citizen advocacy, on nonprofit group advocacy. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, whether you're conservative, liberal, I don't mm -hmm. care. This should terrify you because that's all. This is so political. Mm -hmm. And this is yes. trying to squash, which I want to know what quash means, by the way. Any part of the conservative side, this is an intimidation factor. And they're coming after you now. But they're coming after us. Yes. And if if you have any part in any legislation, apparently, that the Department of Justice doesn't like, they can subpoena you now. I mean, this is historical in like one of those markers, those lines in the sand that's happening here in Alabama to people we know, to people. I mean, I, so many Eagle Forum. Everybody knows Eagle Forum. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't some far away. Like it's happening yeah. and it is terrifying. This is this is literally you're sitting around, you're at the local Jack's or Hardy's or whatever, the, the morning group, which the, whichever the group it is, that, the old yeah. guys or the ladies are at lunch, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and they say, hey, um, somebody call Representative Jones and tell him we need a law to change the speed limit out there. And then the government subpoenas all the ladies at the, at the lunch club mm. and yeah. says, Y'all can't be for this. I mean, this we're, could we're be gonna, me. We're going this to yank you. Yeah. We're going to yank be... you around. We're going to. Yeah. We're going to make you hire lawyers. We're going to make you be worried about it. We're going to make. We're going to make your life miserable because you're for things that we oppose. That's all. That's, and that's if people don't is. believe in cultural Marxism, hello, right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So we have a constitutional right as citizens to do this. Our forefathers gave us the right to address our government to say, "Hey, we've got a grievance." We are allowed to help write I, laws I, and I advocate for laws. So many ideas and and laws somebody would write down on a, on a sheet Napkin. of paper and hey, we I think you mm -hmm. need to do this or can you do something? I mean, that's the way a tremendous amount of that right. is the way the Saturday morning. What's the little show? I'm a Bill on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah, they it start with yes. somebody's? Yeah. yeah, I'm just all these people are mm -hmm. talking and then they go talk. To, I mean, that yeah. is our system. Yeah. So look, listen to the things they wanted okay. us to provide. Okay, now they're fighting in court over whether this is constitutional or not. The, the people fighting in the lawsuit say, I have a right as a parent to direct my kid's medical mm -hmm. decisions. Right. Okay, that's, they're saying, and this okay. law harms me from allowing me to mutilate my child. Yeah, right. I want to be able to right. do I that. I want to be able to do that. Okay. That's what they're saying. So they're fighting over that, right? Mm -hmm. Eagle Forum has nothing to do with whether this is constitutional or not. But right. here's what they'd like us to, to provide for them. And I won't say everything, but any draft legislation or proposed legislation that we assisted in writing or provided feedback on or reviewed. So every every thing every that we you would have used. Said, hey, Senator Beeson, yep. I think I think you're right about that. I think you're wrong about this. Yes. You sent me a little email. Hey, you're on the right track. Oh, we haven't yep. even got to the communication oh, part. Okay, great. So any model legislation from a third party, if we would have gone to Heritage Foundation and said, hey, do you mm -hmm. guys have anything mm -hmm. on this? Right. Um, third-party organizations, medical studies, opinions, evidence that we used in, say, in our research. Right. Um, any the, Okay, this is crazy. Any documents concerning Eagle Forum of Alabama's legislative or policy goals, initiatives, or strategies? What? Mm. So this is reaching outside of VCAP. This is like what? Well, regarding VCAP. We want oh, so, okay, But still, okay. they want our strategies. Okay, mm -hmm. then they want um, written testimony, letters, emails, draft legislation, summaries, analysis, fact sheets, talking points. So what they do also want is how conservative groups get things done. Yes. Mm -hmm. ah, yes. That's what they're looking they for. They want to know. They want to know who what we're working what with. Button, a sleazy what buzz, way. buttons you push. 
who are you talking to? How do you make this grassroots oh, thing go so, so we can so that the government can fully mm-hmm. be able to squash all these things? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And anybody that shows up on one of those, if it's me or any of it's us, definitely me. The, I'm in there we're somewhere. The next person, like for real, to to ask. Well, you're, you're okay. So, no, so I anyway. mean like like local Alabama yes. and you know we. Emailed. I mean, I was very involved in following well, they along want with to what know, was happening. So you would be exempt from this because they want the employees from the state house, from the state legislature, the, okay. the governor's office, lieutenant what? governor's office, um, attorney general's office. These are the communications. They don't care what oh, I said to you. They don't care about me. Right. They okay. say they care if right. Scott was but, but still they, a senator. But they can't get that from me because of legislative privilege or whatever, probably. But they can try to intimidate y'all into giving it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other lobbyists that we might have talked to about anyone else who was helping us with this bill mm-hmm. to push this bill? Mm-hmm. They let me, let um, me ask polling you. opinion, polling data that we would have used. Every presentation, so documents relating to any presentations, videos, interviews, speeches that we have given, they want to see all of that. They want to see the research that we did for all of that. All the emails, all our social media posts having to do with VCAP. What happens if you forget to turn over one of those? Perjury. Guilty of perjury. And then you're going to jail. We'll come visit. <laughs> <laughs> We're In not going to give it to them. we right. visit, so, we may be asked to stay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so you're answering so, now on yes. the show what your plan is. So our we filed a motion last Wednesday. Okay. For to quash okay, the subpoena, which means, means to what? say no. In We're Alabama, not is, it, is it squash in and quash? Yeah, right. yeah. quash. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. That's not the way you would food. look at it. We're right. Right. Quash. And the reason is, is because when you when a subpoena is given, it has to be for things that are relevant to the case. Right. Mm-hmm. Our communications and what I said in a speech, or the right. medical study that I read, right. or we, not right. just me, but I mean right. all of us that worked on this bill has no bearing on the case. Right. So that is why we mm-hmm. have a good reason right. to file a motion to stop this. Oh, I agree with you completely. Well, what, what if the nugget is, because I've been through some of these um, activist efforts, whether multiple things, illegal immigration, um, voter ID, and uh, voter ID and illegal immigration. The nugget they're looking for could be something that they can say, well, you're, I don't know, what are you, what are you if you're anti-transgenderism? You can't be homophobic. What is it? Is it transphobic? You're transphobic. Transphobic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a new word, yeah. but it's, it's a real word. No, it's been around for a while. Like a you week just aren't on two, social two media. Years. <laughs> It's you like need to get that out of it. You just don't yeah. know. Five He's years still ago, back in 2008. When, it's okay. Yeah, no, Two it's years ago, it's, it's a real word. word. It's Everybody a word. knows the word. Yes. So if they're looking for that nugget so they can make it a civil rights violation, then the law doesn't matter because they look into your soul. And they know you did it because you're full of hate. That, I, that's what my guess is. Other than intimidation, they're looking for that because that's what they did on voter ID. Mm-hmm. They, they know the law doesn't have any problem, but they've got this uh, precedent, which is, well, if you change the speed limit on this highway so that minorities, they can claim minorities get more speeding tickets, well, then then you can't do it. It's unconstitutional. So I'm thinking that they're looking, not only intimidating, but they're looking yeah. for some nugget, they're looking for some something. nugget, mm-hmm. somebody said something so they can say they did it only because they But they, they are don't violating like the Constitution by giving right. this to us because we have a yes. right to do this. We have right. a right to free speech. We have a mm-hmm. right to associate with those that we want to associate, these third right. parties in there. So, so they are way out of bounds. So some people have said, even on social media, well, what's the big deal? If you didn't do anything wrong, That's, why don't you just turn it over? Right. You have to realize, people, that... If we were to turn over this information, we are just giving away our freedom. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are just letting our constitutional rights go mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. And we are not going to do that. We are going to continue to fight. You know, if there is anything that is reasonable that they would need, there's just not. So, does the ju- nothing not. so we don't know yet if the judge even knows. And I don't know anything about that judge, so I'm not disparaging him Oh, the judge him at knows. All. I'm sure the judge knows. Okay. Probably the day it was filed. Okay. So, but I don't know what his timeline is. So, anywhere between now and when they hear or- oral arguments in November, they could mm-hmm. make a decision. But when you were saying, you know, they're they might be looking for something. I'm sure mm-hmm. they're looking for our strategy. They're looking for who we associate with. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe they want to pass out some more. Um, the Southeast Law Institute did get the same subpoena. Okay. And they are fighting it also. Um, be, really? And we worked on this bill together. But in the 45 years that Eagle Forum's been doing this, never have they ever received a subpoena. Same in that group, over 35 years at the legislature, never 
Have they received anything like this? So it's intimidation. I've never even, I've never even heard of someone piercing Mm-mm. the veil to the person no. that unbelievable uh, yeah. who had the idea yeah. mm-hmm. or. I mean, but it's so it's I, I commend you for not. And people will say, what's the big deal? Like you said, blah, blah, blah. blah. What's the big deal? Yeah. Hand it over if you have nothing to hide, which in a lot of times is a valid argument. I use that talking about Montgomery a lot. If there's nothing to hide, yeah. why mm-hmm. can't we just look? But even whatever side you're on, like even the left, the people that are that are that filed this suit, mm-hmm. they should thank you for that because they have a right to lobby and petition. Yes. Mm-hmm. For what they want to see passed and to form their groups and to have their voice. Like, that's the thing is this isn't just about protecting conservatives or whatever. This is about just protecting American rights and liberties that we've had and that are disappearing overnight, it seems. And it's interesting that all this Title IX stuff is coming out, too. I mean, all this goes together. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they're just building their case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Precedent. Things. Well, they want to squash anyone right. who is fighting back against right. what they want to do. Right. So not only is it intimidation, but they want to sideline us from the work yeah. that we're doing. We've, we're right. getting ready for 2023 legislative session. We right. got a lot of bills that we're working on. Well, if we have to stop and deal with this, right. and we've already had to deal, even though we've right. not given this over, it has still taken a lot of time. But then also, when someone receives a subpoena, there's automatically like, what did they do wrong? What's are they mm-hmm. criminal? Mm-hmm. And so people who've mm-hmm. never heard of Eagle Forum are all of a sudden now, wait, what? They got a subpoena? What mm-hmm. what's right. going on they over must there? Be doing something They're bad. casting dispersion on mm-hmm. our group. Right. And in one of our small groups that met yesterday, and this is a group which have a, a lot of very um in that, very smart political people. They're they've been in it a long time. They're mm-hmm. seasoned. And someone came in and said, you know what? I don't want to put my name down on the sign up sheet. Stop it. Because this kind of stuff. Yeah. This is a way to silence right. the grassroots, which is all the more reason why we need to be talking yes, about it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to put your name on on a piece of paper. Right. Because when we do that, we are just giving away our freedoms. Mm-hmm. We're allowing right. them to take more every time we do that. And th- and this is the first time ever that this has occurred. And, and that's one of the things people that should we know, know of. Yeah. And the, the the Biden administration and this DOJ are doing things that have never occurred in this country. They, they've occurred in other places in the world third world countries, right. those kinds of places. But they are literally doing things. They're using tactics. And the regular folks who don't pay any attention, the ones who immediately say, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, that drives me crazy when they say that. Right. Do not realize that these these are weapons. They're, they're they not, are they're weapons. Not only they're taking your time, they're taking your money, financial resources that could be used for something good. The, the DOJ <clears throat> is engaged in lawfare. It's not just the private attorneys. Yeah, coughing all over me. <laughs> you deserve it because you're the one I with, the, you did that with the organic yeah. uh, cologne or <laughs> perfume. Okay, sorry, we can edit. That <laughs> well, it, but here's the deal. I mean, it's two things: a thought and then a question for you. Is COVID just happened? How could we forget that the same people are saying it's no big deal? Mm-hmm. Were they the same people to strap on a mask first? And we're the crazy people that were like, "Yeah, we're not going to get the vaccine," and that mask right. is also giving away your freedom. Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. we're like we're like sheep. We constantly yes. forget that this fire must be tended. Right. Yes. It is one of those things, like you just said, where you can't give in. You can't. And you in. can't let the other people go out front and take the hit. You just can't do it. Like that that ship has sailed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, because if we're all going down, we've got to go down together. Yes. You know? And I'm seeing too many people. I'm seeing a lot of people coming out ready to stand up. But then I, I'm seeing some that are still think that they can... That they can avoid. They can it. avoid yes. saying something on Facebook, but they'll go around and send a message yes. on Facebook. Right. Then right. Why don't? Why are you lying? Just right. Live not by lies. Right. If you haven't read the book, you need to read the book. Yeah. But, so they so they think they'll be the last person the alligator eats. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're still going to be eaten. That's right. Right. We'll be waving to them still at re-education camp. <laughs> Welcoming them in. Hey. Welcome. Welcome but all we have sweetheart ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. gosh. That, that, it, that's terrifying. What is it the, is. Um, have you heard from Governor Ivey or Steve Marshall? I know a few legislators have spoken I out have in not the defense. Ju- just the one that I've heard from the most. Uh, you all saw Chris Elliott. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Senator Chris Elliott was really funny talking about, you, they picked on the wrong people. Yeah, that's the, you great. Know, we're not criminals. We're not doing something yeah. nefarious. Right. Um, but Congressman Adderholt also sent out. Okay, that's good. 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 Uh, 
and in my um congressman barry moore knows all about it and i'm sure he'll send something but um but anyone nothing, that like, sees nothing, this gary palmer is, no, no i mean Tuberville. This all this just happened. You know, it's not even been a week yet. Yeah, so. but it's kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. I, I it's okay. Mm. There's a lot of news going around on a lot of issues, so I'm not upset with them that something hasn't okay. come out. I know they're dealing with right. a lot of things, but I hope they're not I doing the sure. Trump thing, which is well. Let's wait and see what. No, no, no. I, I, I think <laughs> see what they got on Eagle Forum. Any, anyone who loves freedom <laughs> and sees this would want to speak out about it. Okay, yeah. but. All right, I'm just waiting. There's a few key people that I'm waiting to hear from, and I hope they I hope they will they make a statement. Too. Because, and I, I hope they would do that. You know, not just again because it's us, but for any group. Yes, I mean, and a lot of times they're very quick to call out Biden for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe I wanted it yesterday. Maybe I'm getting impatient in my old age. But like, this yeah, is I think a big you just deal. Want people to fight the fight. I know, and to like, just don't say, start, start, just bring the flame jump in, hang regularly. in. Like, you protect yeah. your family, you protect right. your people, right. and and when you are called to lead the state of Alabama, that's what you do. Right. Um, you mean and, when you begged and spent millions of dollars and said, "I'm going to be a fighter for you"? Yes, you probably should fight. Maybe you should fight. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe that's a really good idea. That's I, a novel idea. I don't know. It's on all their mailers. I just thought at some point they would do it. <laughs> exactly but, right. And not, not say, you don't really believe in yeah. that, do you? Right. Mm. So, all right. For all the people that are out there ready to jump in the fight, how did you get started doing all this? Like, how did you get Okay, so in? I was a military mom, a military wife, homeschool mom, very patriotic, always voted, but did not even watch the news. I just couldn't handle it. Just, ugh. In Wetumpka. In Wetumpka. Mm-hmm. But I, I started. <laughs> I started to pull my head out, of, head out of the sand when I went to a world Christian Worldview weekend thing and and learned about. If you're a Christian and you really want to preserve our society, you got to get involved. And that just that was the door that opened mm-hmm. it for me. So I that was twenty eight um, the twenty eight two thousand eight election. Okay. 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 So I started really paying attention to the candidates. And by the time I knew Obama was a socialist, it didn't take me too long to figure that one out. But when they had the bailouts in the fall is when mm-hmm. we really, my husband and I both really got concerned. And then you fast forward to the Tea Party when yeah, Rick Santelli talk about this. on the stock exchange, you know, got up and said, do we yes. need to have another Tea Party? So on April 9th, mm-hmm. we decided to have a Tea Party in Wetumpka. My, my husband said, hey, we got a lot of old people that live up here and not everyone's going to want to fight the crowd in Montgomery. Why don't we just do it at the park here? I was like, okay. So I got on the radio, had never even been on the radio, got on and said, hey, we're just going to have this little thing. We had homeschoolers that were going to speak. Right. We had, and this was like in a week's amount of time or whatever, we had 460 people show up. Oh, wow. It was awesome. And this homeschooler speakers were so amazing. Mm-hmm. They were award winners and really good. Right. And so that's kind of how we started. And then we applied for our 501c4, uh, which was mm-hmm. right around the 2012 election cycle. And, or 2010 election cycle when we filed for that. And, that's and that was when the Wetumpka Lois, Tea Party Wetumpka Patriots. Tea Party, just Wetumpka Tea Party. Wetumpka Tea Party, okay. And then Lois Lerner was taking all those applications mm. and just kind of shoving them under there. Gave anything right. that said Tea Party, Liberty, yeah. Freedom, those mm-hmm. kind of things. And, but we found out that we were being targeted and we hired the um, American Center for Law and Justice. We went in with a whole bunch of other groups and fought back. We did get our 501c4. Mm-hmm. It took us almost two years. You're supposed to take 90 days. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until we threatened them with a lawsuit that they finally gave it over. And then I had the opportunity to testify mm-hmm. in Congress, which was awesome. But so this isn't the first fight with the government. I certainly didn't pick either of the fights, but we have to stand up. Yeah. We definitely have to stand up. But this is a and new level. And there's more and more coming. So, yes. so back in 2012, the government attacking conservative groups was basically we don't oh. we, we, we're going to ignore your application no and, let me and tell now you we're, but we're moving on it to was, much it was very similar more. because they basically said i had a complete application for mm-hmm. the 501c4 as it's the tea party group everything legal no problem should have been should have gotten it right away right. they sent me a letter way back later down the road kept okay. us hanging all this time they wanted 87 new pieces of information 87? 87. They wanted me to turn over all the names of my volunteers. They wanted donor names, amounts they gave, the dates they gave. They wanted to see all the speeches, copies of the speeches. They wanted to know the speakers' names, their credentials. They demanded to know dates and times and locations of meetings. And it went on and on. It was 87 items. And we said, no, we're not doing that. 
So we didn't. And that's mm-hmm. that's the part that we won in, in our suit. But when I read through this new subpoena from the Department of Justice, it was like deja vu. <laughs> He's like, mm-hmm. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. Here I am he does. again. <laughs> that this is yeah. the same tactics they were using before. Mm-hmm. Right. And it did turn a lot of people away from the Tea mm-hmm. Party movement because they were scared their name was going to be on a list in the government somewhere. Right. And the Tea Party was and the IRS would come knocking on your door and say, "Let's see the last Mm -hmm. so many years and every receipt and yeah everything." It really is lawfare. I mean, it is. It is lawfare. Mm -hmm. And and we will come make your life miserable, Mm -hmm. or you can just swear to us that you'll never be involved in anything again, and Mm -hmm. we won't bother you anymore. I mean, it really is. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that the people because it just irritates me to no end that there are people who say, "Well, what's the big deal?" And now some of those people are on the other side. Okay, so right. we have to admit that. They're saying that just because mm-hmm. they're on that side. But, I mean, but, but even the if folks, you're on the other side, don't you see? They don't care. They they're, don't love the they're, Constitution, they're winning. I guess. Well, they're that's winning. true. This is they the group that wanted the tolerance until really, they got the levers of power, and now they're like, the heck with tolerance. They, they don't really like <laughs> America in general. Yeah. Right. Agreed. They, okay. Some of them don't like themselves. There's well, right. That's a little deeper than I was right. going, but like they. <laughs> yeah, just, it's very deep, but true. Right. <laughs> no, it is true. I just way they, to really bring us down. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's a different podcast. I'm just cheery. We'll do some therapy with Scott. <laughs> or not. That'd be good for me. <laughs> but how? Okay, Becky. So we're running out of time. But what? Like how? What can we do to help you? What do you? What's your message to just? the normal people that want to get involved and want to do something and how do we help and how do we overcome that fear? Cause sorry, nobody wants to be Becky Garrettson yeah, right now. Right. Well, actually there's some people that would really have yeah, fun with it. Fun. We have yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Y'all would be with me. Yeah. yeah. No, you are, I mean, you like, absolutely. I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'm like, yes. which courthouse I'll go sit there with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what, what do you need from us from your, okay. So here, there are a couple of things. If you have not read the book, Live not by lies. Okay, that's all you people out there. Number one, read it because it is the right it now. is the book that made my husband walk away from his very good job because mm. he didn't want to get a vaccine. Wow. With nothing, I mean, there was no fallback. But he said, "I can't live this lie. I can't live." There were other things going on at work that, mm-hmm. and he said, "I can't. I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to wear the mask. I'm not going to do all these stupid things. Yeah. I'm going to live mm-hmm. how I need to live." And that is pro liberty, so that it's a great book. Okay, it's, who wrote it? Um, Rod Dreyer, okay. and what he does is he interviews people that lived in the Eastern Bloc countries, and how did oh, they wow. get through it? How did they survive? How did they not just crumble and give their sovereignty away? And mm-hmm. it's really great. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is get involved in a small group, whether it's Eagle Forum. You go to Eagle Forum of Alabama. We have you know groups that meet every month all over the state. Get involved. Get involved with local Alabama. Whatever mm-hmm. a small group. We COVID hurt us because yeah. we stopped meeting together. Right. And they were able to push us pretty far. Mm-hmm. And so we need to really get that back. Um, that's a another great way. I think talking about this story, passing it around on social media. <laughs> my social media, I post all these we so many articles have been written in the last week over this story. Mm-hmm. And I get two likes. Yeah. Well. Which is not, I mean, the, I know that's how the game will hate you right. too. Yeah. Well, you might have gotten so, a lot more too. Well, because they could have just censored it with the algorithm. I, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, anyway, mm-hmm. so, so share these stories, talk about these stories, help people understand why, e- even though we did nothing wrong, we still shouldn't have to turn it over. Right. right. They are breaking the Constitution by right. giving this to us. Help people right. understand that. And we can always use donations. We have a wonderful attorney who is in the um, Alliance Defending Freedom Network, who is here oh, in great. Alabama, who's doing this for us pro bono, wow. which is huge. Yes. But there still are a lot of costs that right. come along with this. And there's a lot that has, has happened with this issue where we, we really need some mm-hmm. become a member, mm-hmm. uh, become a monthly donor. It's, yeah. We're not asking for a lot, but if you we are your voice at the state house. Right. We are down there while you guys are working your jobs, while you're taking care of your kids. We are there to fight for you. And if you appreciate that, please help us out. Send us some money yeah. and, and help us keep Good. doing what we're doing mm-hmm. and keep growing. Um, and keep doing the great work you guys are doing because you are spotlighting these awful things that are happening you do and good it's work important. too scott you looked at me yeah, like so <laughs> y'all doing fantastic stuff so let me ask you this question before we go i know we're, we're running out of time in a little while when someone says um are you a lobbyist 
I personally, I personally, because I am a paid employee of Eagle Forum, Mm -hmm. I am a registered lobbyist. Mm -hmm. But everyone else, all our volunteers that go with us, they're not, no one else is a registered lobbyist. I think our president. I think sometimes people forget because we automatically say, well, the lobbyists are the bad guys. Right. And and there, and there are some. Yes. But there are people who lobby who are being paid to work on behalf of conservative causes. Right. Sure. And so whenever, if you but ever run for office, lobbyist is not a good we're name. We're going to write so, on the mailer, she's a lobbyist. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. But technically, mm-hmm. I have to be registered right. as a lobbyist. But, but anybody that advocates for social issues or any issues, whatever, not just social, but anybody that talks to a legislator, goes to Montgomery with an idea, is a lobbyist. They're lobbying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're lobbying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they're just not a paid lobbyist. Right. I think I we mean, need a new term, a freedom lobbyist. Yeah. Yeah. You're an advocate. Let's just do the good, good lobbyist. Citizen yeah, I'm, I'm a good one. Right, I'm a good yeah. lobbyist. Yeah. And that's what we for all the should be. Causes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when are you going to get your subpoena for something you've been It's coming. With? It's I'm coming. Sure. It will yeah. come with you, too. I don't want to give any ideas. Amy Best going to take the, she's a reporter- no, yeah, I'm a journalist. I'm yes. still, I'm right. still gonna. It's coming. I I'm mean, surprised I you have oh, been I've making been the wrong people a bunch mad. Of times I get yeah. tired of it. No, I'll be the first. When you said, to go. "Oh, I'm all in," I'm like, mm, you those know, three what? or four hour depositions are oh, not fun. because here's the deal. You're a terrible person. Here's the other part of it that is just, you know, I want y'all to expand on it because you've all been there before we go. I know. I'm watching the time. <laughs> it is scary, mm-hmm. don't you it's think? Sweet. I mean, there are times when you're like, I'm, I'm kind of scared right now. It really is unnerving. There's no doubt mm-hmm. about it. And then when other people don't want to be, oh, I, don't yeah. want, I don't want to sign your sheet or whatever. Right. You're like, wait a minute. You're trying you, to rally the troops. Why, why, right? and I'm going to take afraid. all the arrows. You, you, you send me to prison by myself. Right. And a bunch of people are like, yeah, heck yeah, you can let you go. Right. And uh, it is scary. And that's the mm-hmm. point. That's what they're mm-hmm. trying to do. Mm-hmm. And and if we don't stand up and, and support y'all, and then they'll just do it to more and more people. Right. Which is why we all have to stand up. Yeah. And show them that they can't do this. Right. Well, there's completely. grace. I mean, I think everybody's on a different timeline. Yes. Mm-hmm. And everybody yes. has that one moment, I feel yes. like, where you're like, okay. That's enough. I'm tapping out of this, you know, sticking my head in the sand, like like it's go time. But everybody, yeah, is on a different path. I just hope more people get on our path. Yeah. 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 I yeah. feel like some people are like scurrying and hiding in the bushes now. Yeah. And it's almost like there's a narrow path. And almost. Uh, I think kind of imagine that. that. I, like, I can't. I don't know where I heard that somewhere. before. You know, our founding fathers had a narrow path. Mm-hmm. They were a ragtag bunch. Yeah. There, it wasn't the majority by yeah. any means, which is why our work is so important. And, mm. I, you know, Eagle Forum is a dedicated Christian, Judeo-Christian organization. Right. And, and prayer is a big part of everything we do. And we know God's got this. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. is with us, especially freedom. The freedoms that we have in this country are based off of our Bible. Right. And he's looking out for us and he's yeah. going to fight right. our battles. And so we just do what we can do. And and what's the option? Like the alternative is we all just sit down and are like, okay, come take me away. You really you know. want to go to that camp, don't you? <laughs> she just wants more. She of really I mean, wants more candy. Let's candy. just get it over with. Let's just go and get started. Like, yeah. You like, want to get there and decorate it? Like, what, what's the wrong with the curtains here? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's always the anxiety of waiting is the worst part. But no, but I'm thinking like the alternative is we do nothing. And then, yeah. and you know, talk about our founding fathers. Like, what if they had done nothing? We- well, look in these these huh. countries that that are communistic. They didn't do anything. And look yeah. what happened. And we are going down that path. And even, whether we sit by and do nothing, mm-hmm. they're still coming for us, even if you're doing nothing. Yeah, That's you why you, you might as well do it, it and them. go out with a fight. So mm-hmm. let me ask this, and this is a philosophical question, I think, because... You were talking about the red pill moment, I guess. Yeah. Basically, w- yeah. at what point do people say, I'm not going to take it anymore? Yeah. You're trying to get people to, to get involved and, and not avoid it. We talk about these issues all the time. What is it? What does it take? I mean, I I kind of feel like people have to have a certain worldview or a philosophy. They have to have they have to have learned something. They have to have something that, wait a minute, I didn't I didn't know that. But now since I know that. My, my view has changed. I want to get involved. It's mm-hmm. worth defending. D- did we lose the the fight and the zeal for freedom and liberty because mm-hmm. we lost education? Because we, we didn't teach our, the younger generations about 
how great America is. We we really don't know what we're standing for. I mean, that's kind of what I'm yeah, talking about. What, if, what does it. it take for us to wake more people up? What have y'all seen in your experience? I mean, y'all are newer to the, yeah. hey, I just woke up thing than, than I am because I'm so old. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that right. I knew save. that was coming. Was when I saw the softball going, I was like, grabbing it back. <laughs> So what, I mean, what I have, and I, I just think we are, I mean, for me, I think two things. My generation, I don't know if we're in different mm, generations. No, you're in my generation. <laughs> we've had a cushy, nice American life. Like we, I mean, we've seen some conflict and some wars, mm -hmm. but we didn't but go through the Great Depression. We didn't go mm -hmm. through World War One, World War Two. you know, like. And you just kind of settle in and you really take it for granted. And, and it's like any issue until you're really personally affected. Mm -hmm. It's like cancer. You can listen to people's stories mm -hmm. when they have a loved one that's mm -hmm. died of cancer. If they're going through cancer treatment until you've walked through it, you don't really grasp it. Right. And mm -hmm. you don't really take it personally and become active in it. And I think that's where we are. It's like we're so spoiled rotten. And, and our parents worked really hard to give us. To give us this cushy ride. life. Mm -hmm. And then we're just like making it even cushier on our next generation. And so I think the wake up moment comes when it's got to touch people very personally because mm -hmm. you don't care about what's happening at Eagle Forum until they come after your business because mm -hmm. you aren't enforcing ESG rules. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's really different. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I think we're That'll just spoiled. Sense. Yeah. Because we were talking on but, my radio show today about. All the people, all the millions of Americans who said, yeah, let's go to war with Russia over Ukraine. And I'm like, these are people who think the power comes out of the wall and the grocery, the food is, yeah. you know, ends up at the grocery store. They have no idea. Right. If their cell phone won't charge in this war, they will die. I mean, they'll have a heart attack. So I think we're just so pampered that we don't yeah. think about it. I mean, you, you went to a conference uh, mm -hmm. that kind of shook you. I really wish more Christians would... Go to that conference yeah. and, and, I go and get to a, shaken. This is another thing that people should do. Go to a church where they speak mm -hmm. biblical truths because you have to have that backbone. You need to mm -hmm. you need to have the truth poured into you, and you need to um, go that's fellowship right. where they're speaking mm -hmm. truth. But Amy, that's what how people start it saying you? it's right or wrong. Because, sorry, Scott. No, it's good. Because <laughs> you ran for the house seat like was that the beginning of kind of mm -hmm. your but you've always been involved she was a rabble rouser before I, that well here you know what you it was through miss alabama first. i should go to camp first <laughs> uh, because i was in high schools starting in alabama and then kind of moved around speaking about abstinence and character education i started when i was mm -hmm. 19 and that's one of the reasons why i love that organization because it forced us to choose mm -hmm. something to commit to and so because of that and because I'm adopted, those two kind of went together. So that was also when I started doing pro-life speaking at that age. And so, um, and then it kind of grew from there. I mean, we went and had our kids and kind of like you, like paid attention. My The women in my family, along with the men, obviously, but I thought it was just excellent that all the women in my family are very politically astute. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty cool that I had a grandmother who knew what was going on. And even though they were from up north, I still became acquainted with politics through listening yeah, to their... Up North people are smart, too. Up North people are real smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from a very special town there myself. Um, and so, you know, that's really watching them, listening to them. And then also that biblical truth being poured into, because I think not only do we have education, and that's been lagging since like the 60s, yeah. as we're doing yes. a deep dive into communism, yes. right? But you couple that with a lack of biblical, like biblical illiteracy, and the percent of people, I think it's like 18% of all the people mm -hmm. who actually have a Bible in their home, only 18% or so actually pick it up mm -hmm. at least once a week. Mm -hmm. So there we have a problem because then we also don't know our Bible. And then we're going to churches where we found out during COVID, a lot of people were not preaching the truth. They they were, they were bought into the narrative. right? And so that exposed a lot of issues. But I think that there's a chance because if we will dive back into the Word, we'll find that it's a very active book. There's zero apathy in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's very much admonition to bloom where you're planted and seek the welfare of your city. That's what we're told to do. And so that's what we have to do. 
So I think if we can regain those things and own our walk with the Lord and find churches that preach biblically and find groups like y'all's yeah. and listen to radio shows like yes. yours that are pouring into you every day, we'll be okay. But that requires a commitment. Mm -hmm. And it, our point. culture is such an impact, has such an impact on us becoming so lazy and spoiled that it's really hard to live in this culture. And if you're not grounded spiritually, yes, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. It really is. Really. And this, that's what this law is all about. I mean, this is a, a complete deviation from nature, a complete deviation from um, what's always been. Right. And there's that Second Corinthians ten five verse about tearing down every stronghold that comes against the Lord, and that's what this is, mm -hmm. and that's our calling, and that's worth that's, fighting for. That's our calling. Yes, is that we are to come against whatever comes against the Lord. Period. So get busy, everybody. Yeah. I was right. talking Lord. today uh, a little bit about the fact that there there are two worldviews that are dominant. Mm -hmm. There's the these the Christian. Christendom, Western civilization, worldview, traditional American, and then there's the new woke socialist. And we were talking about Nancy Pelosi giving a speech in San Francisco where she said that the people who are opposed to abortion are sinful. Mm. It was just evil. Now they're literally Wait, she taking. She used the word. She used sinful? the word sinful, and that was that was, that was brave. Why, that's why I had the same response you're having on your face right now. I'm not she sure. used she used sinful. Okay. And so there, there's these two warring sides. And I know some people don't want to take a side, but it's like you Does said, she Becky. Do you know what sin is? I think she doesn't. I think not. <laughs> I think she forgot. I was just like, I thought murder was You a might sin. not just want to use God's word yeah. and just choose it. Stick with is evil. There Stick with evil. Right, lightning? right. But, but they believe what we believe is evil. We believe because what God says is evil. And there's not going to be a middle ground. So people mm. really need to start deciding. Mm. Which side they want to be on, mm -hmm. and states need to decide. That cities need to decide. Yes, and we need to decide where we're going to stand. And we can only, you know, influence in Alabama, but we can stand with the folks who are on our side, mm -hmm. and hope that our elected officials that we're going to have more of them coming in yes. the, next, I've, the next few I've got weeks. A list. And I'm um, checking and them start off. taking a stand yeah. and, and say, as for you know, me and the people of Alabama, our house, mm. we're going to stand with God. Mm -hmm. When you when you love yes. to hear oh, that, so great. Yeah. ready, break. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, we'd, we'd have so many less problems if we just did what the Bible said. We wouldn't have people wouldn't have STDs. People mm. wouldn't have murders. You know, I mean, right. there are so many great things. Uh, you wouldn't have divorces. Right. You, would, you know, it just life could just be really great. It would be more. I mean, Imagine more like that. the utopia they keep promising us. Yep. If yeah. we just did it the other way, right? Which, but if you live in sin, all this God, right. bad yeah. things happen to you. So. Mm. You want to close wow. this out? Okay. That was whoo. no. I I mean I no. I don't. You're so good at it. You're good at closing out. But I, as y'all were talking, I was thinking it really comes down to you have to have something bigger than yourself in yes. your life that mm. propels you to speak up for truth and to go out there and do the hard things and to not live in fear. To be able to say I'm not going to turn this over or I am going to speak up for this person and stand in the gap. Because if you don't have anything bigger than yourself, you yeah. never, ever You'll be will. crushed. You'll right. be crushed. So on that time note, time. you yeah, want no, to tell all the listeners to have a great day. Everybody a break. break. Hey, <laughs> yep. this has been this week's edition of Alabama Unfiltered. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to go and give us a thumbs up or a five stars at all the places you watch your podcast. Please tell some other people about the program. That's why this show is growing by leaps and bounds. Becky, thank you for being on. Good thank luck you. to you. And God bless it's Eagle Forum and the work y'all do. Keep us posted. Definitely. Yes. We'll do like an update in one yes. of our shows. Let's do. Just we can right. either have you back or and we can beam will, you in. Allison will come see yeah. you in prison. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank Bring the candy. I'm working on the escape plan now. See y'all later. And candy. <laughs>